Internal fixation involves fixation of the fracture, using cancellous screws or pins. The patient is positioned supine on a fracture table. Allowing distraction of the fracture. By pulling the leg in the direction of the long axis, if necessary, the position of the injured leg can be manipulated, in order to achieve satisfactory reduction of the fracture. A short incision is made, just below the greater trochanter, sharply dividing the skin, subcutaneous tissue and fascia. Two guide wires are drilled, parallel to the femoral neck, both lying centrally in the lateral view, and in the front view, as wide apart as the anatomy allows with one wire resting on the calca, satisfactory positions of both wires, are confirmed under fluoroscopy in both planes. The two wires, guide the cannulated drill bit, ensuring correct position of the screws. The length of the cancellous screws is measured, and the screws inserted over the wires. The guide wires are finally removed, and the fascia, subcutaneous tissue and skin closed successively. Correct position of the screws. The length of the cancellous screws is measured, and the screws inserted over the wires, cutaneous tissue and fascia. Two guide wires are drilled, parallel to the femoral neck, both lying centrally in the lateral view, and in the front view. Internal fixation involves fixation of the fracture, using cancellous screws or pins. The patient is positioned supine on a fracture table, allowing distraction of the fracture. By pulling the leg in the direction of the long view, as wide apart as the anatomy allows with one wire resting on the calca, satisfactory positions of both wires, are confirmed under fluoroscopy in both planes. The two wires, guide the cannulated drill bit, ensuring correct axis, if necessary. The position of the injured leg can be manipulated, in order to achieve satisfactory reduction of the fracture. A short incision is made, just below the greater trochanter, sharply dividing the skin, sub